Uh, Josh Green here for Tungsten Tales. Delighted to be joined by Robin Byrne, who had a very successful weekend making the semi-finals of the second ever Women's World Match Play. Um, Robin, how are you doing, first of all? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Very well, very well. Um, let's talk about that weekend. It was a huge weekend for women's starts, the culmination of the, the women's series, obviously. Just talk to me about the experience, first of all, of being in Blackpool. What was it like to, to be in, in that tournament? Yeah, just being there was amazing. Like being in the venue, doing all the media backstage, practicing in the venue beforehand, all that is amazing. Even before you even got on the stage, like you really feel like a proper art player and not just a full player for once. Yeah, does it does it really sort of professionalize it in some way? Because you do walk in and everything is very different to a, a county setup or an open setup when you walk into a PDC tournament. Yeah, it's really really different, especially like can't even walk around the venue by yourself like if someone is scoring you everywhere you're going from the practice room down to the walk on to everything you like it makes you feel important it makes you feel like a professional it's great mm. um how was it on stage for you i know you haven't had the tv experience that some of the ladies have had in that tournament but you certainly seem to deal with the nerves and everything that comes with it very well yeah, I wasn't actually that nervous. Like, I it wasn't nerves I was feeling. It was more adrenaline. Like, when I walked up on stage first, I could feel my whole body shaking. But then when I started throwing darts, I was like, I'm actually all right. Like, I'm not too bad. And when I threw a good force leg, I was hoping it'd settle me down. And I think it made my adrenaline drop completely because the second leg I threw down was absolutely horrific. Mm. And I had to kind of take a step back and was like, right, relax yourself settle down now and once I kind of settled into it, I was all right I didn't really mind I actually enjoyed playing on stage though so I was happy with how it went yeah was that important that you you have that sort of personality where you where you enjoy the stage game because you did seem to settle very quickly I think the first six darts were were ton 40 ton 40 and there's no real better way to settle than that is that yeah I think it's important that you like the stage I know some of the girls don't like playing on stage and I think that can hinder you when you get up there. Like it's you're mm. concentrating on the crowd, you're concentrating on the venue, you're concentrating on cameras, then you're not concentrating on the darts. Whereas I got once I got onto the stage, I was concentrated on the darts and didn't really mind being on stage, just like playing anywhere else. Yeah. For you, you haven't had the opportunity, as I said before, that some of the girls have had. Why do you think that that is? Because definitely with with the game we saw from you, you more than competitive with those eight players that were in that tournament. I never went to any of the WDFs really or ever actually tried to qualify for Lakeside or for World mm. Masters or for any of that. I've played in the World Masters a couple of times, but when I was a bit younger, I haven't played in it in a few years, to be fair. Um, I never really tried to qualify for Lakeside. I went to the Lakeside qualifier a couple of times, mm. but never done the tour. I lost out in the deciding game to Rianne in the Lakeside qualifier a couple of years ago. But apart from that, I've never really tried to get the opportunities. I think if I had tried, I could have gotten them, but it just wasn't in the interest for me at the time. Yeah. Let's talk about the 95 finish to finish off that first game against Rianne. You see the smile on your face there. How much of a relief was it to hit the double 19? I couldn't believe it. Even I was saying to my family and that afterwards, so I threw the first out and I, I actually wasn't sure if it was in the treble 19 or not. But I heard the noise of the crowd, so I was like, well, they can see on the big screen. It's obviously a just throw the second one. And when that went in, then I just couldn't believe it. I was so happy. I was so relieved just to see the dark go into the double. Mm. And then going into the second round, you obviously faced, I believe, the tournament favourite and really the, the darling of women's darts at the moment. She's going through the tournaments and the victories like you wouldn't believe. Going into that, was the belief there that you could beat her? Yeah, definitely. I wouldn't turn up to a tournament if I didn't believe I could win it. And I knew if I got over my first one, I was going to be playing ball. Mm. So I knew that I could beat her. I had chances. I missed chances. But ball doesn't give you many chances. So if you're not taking every opportunity you get, you won't beat her. Like she, once I went 3-2 went up, she made a 3-all. That was it then. That one oh one check out was phenomenal mm. after me missing the big number for the 130 and then her last leg was just unplayable then so there was nothing really I could do after that but yeah definitely I go into every game thinking I can win it. Did you gain confidence and did you see maybe a little bit of weakness from her first game because she definitely wasn't at her best against Noah then? 
I actually didn't see a lot of our first game. So when they went down from the factory, we were bowling up. Um, their game was starting and then we were down in the backstage practice room after that didn't really see much of our game and it was so quick that we actually didn't have much time to do anything because Bo's game was so fast so yeah I didn't actually see much of our first game I just assumed she played well winning 4-0 so yeah. honestly I haven't a clue what happened in our first game <laughs> Um, In terms of the women's world match play as a whole is it a huge motivational factor for you now that if you play the women's series, you've got things like that. And then further on, you've got things like the Grand Slam, possibly Ali Pali, if you do well in these tournaments. Yeah, definitely. Um, especially now, I haven't been there. I want to get back there. Like, it was such a good experience. I enjoyed it so much that I don't want to be sitting watching it at home next year. Mm. So I really, yeah, this weekend, the women's series starts back up again, qualifying for next year. And I'll be definitely giving it my all again this year to try and qualify. I don't want to drop down. Once you put yourself up there, you don't want to take a step back. You want to keep pushing forward. Mm. Are you sort of putting your, your eggs in one basket then with the women's series? Is that where most of your focus is going to be? Yeah, I just think it makes sense really to prioritise it. Um, play the women's series, play a couple of Irish tournaments, qualify for the Ireland team each year. And I'll play for the Ireland team, I'll play women's series. If I'm around for like the likes of the Irish Open, I'll play that because I'm in Ireland. Um. I'd go to a WF tournament for a weekend away. Like, not, I don't see it as like majorly professional darts. Like, it's, they're not always the best run tournaments. And like, they're great tournaments. I've played them. And if you win one, well done. Like, it's a huge win. And I'd love to be up there winning them. But financially wise and time off work, it just doesn't make sense to try and chase that for me at the minute. If I would play Lakeside qualifiers and stuff to qualify for Lakeside, I think playing at Lakeside is a great achievement and I would like at some stage maybe to get on that stage. But if I don't, it wouldn't be the biggest loss in my career either. Um, I'd like to make Blackfield again next year quicker than I'd like to make Lakeside. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about your journey a little bit. Um, Where did the passion for darts start for you? Um, My dad played, so I was probably like five, six, maybe playing at home. Mm. always kind of annoying him when he was practicing or whatever so um, eventually he let me play then and I started playing youth darts then in Ireland I played for the Dublin youth team then in county and I just kind of really pushed on from there I played for Ireland then as a youth won the Europe Cup and won the World Masters in the youth so I, that kind of was the end of it then I was no, no, there was no going back so I kind of pushed on into the senior darts in Ireland then and yeah kind of that's where it's been Mm. Was there a big youth scene back then? Was there much going on there? Yeah, yeah. In Ireland, the youth scene is big. Um, there's a lot of very good players. There was, especially in my time, there was a lot of good players. The year I went to the Europe Cup, I think we came back with like, or maybe like 15 medals, something like that. Like the year after, the youth team won the Europe Cup. The year after, I think, I think we've brought home every, medals every single year since the year I've won the Europe Cup. So, it just shows that there is strength in the Irish youth at the minute. Like even you have a couple of girls coming through. You had Rebecca Allen and Ina Bourne yeah. getting to the Pears semi final, and you had Rebecca getting to the Pears final uh, semi final this year in the Europe Cup. So even that's great. Yeah. And then you have the Bias team is coming along as well. So yeah, I think there's a lot of strength in Irish youth starts. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I was covering things at the JDC. There were in in the men's side. There was obviously Keen Barry, Killian Effin, and um. Sean Cummings as well um, and obviously you've got Katie Sheldon who was playing in the JDC and she was at Blackpool last year so I think yeah. definitely you can see there's there's people there's players that have come from the academy setups and are starting to progress onto that senior tour now yeah definitely like even if you look at the Irish senior team this year at the Six Nations I'm 26 and I was the oldest player on the women's team mm-hmm. you'd Katie is 19 and Ethan's 21. Like that just shows that the youth's coming through, the strength coming through into the senior game in Ireland. And I definitely think from what's coming through now, it'll be great in the next few years. Mm. You're the oldest player on the team at 26. So yeah. That, so did you have to play a different, different sort of role there? Like, were you kind of the mum of the team? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm probably the worst influence on the team. So, oh dear. Um, so you say about coming through in terms of the youth setup and it was a very quick progression what sort of age were you starting to play senior tournaments 
I'm probably playing senior tournaments since I'm, I don't know, maybe 12, 13, 14, like, maybe, maybe younger, I don't know. Like, I was like, if there was a tournament there I could play, I'd just play it, like, especially with the women's. I would have played women's from when I was, like, young, like, maybe, like, 11, 12. Hmm. And then I've played in men's tournaments in Ireland since I'm probably, like, 14, 15, maybe younger. Does that prepare you well for the, the pressure and everything that you, sort of you're facing now? Yeah, I suppose it does. Yeah, you're used to playing the better players. That's really what it's all about, isn't it? So, like, in Ireland at the minute, apart from the qualifiers for the Irish team, like, I wouldn't play a lot of women's arts. I'd play, like, two, three leagues a week, men's leagues, and I would play, like, men's tournaments throughout, like, the weekends when there's no women's series or anything on. So the only time you'd really be playing women's starts in Ireland is to qualify for the team, and that'd be it, really. Okay, good stuff. So the goal now is just to get back to Blackpool. Is that the main thing you're focusing on? Well, it was up until a couple of days ago when I realised that top three in the rankings are going to end up being qualified for the World Championship because Bo won the match play. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at the rankings there, and I think I'm only like 1,200 behind Fallon or something. Yeah. So... I'll give that a go and I won't um I won't say no to a world championship spot like but nah it's not it's not a main goal but if it happens it happens and yeah my main goal is definitely to get back to Blackpool next year. Hmm. Did you think the opportunity would ever be there to be to go to Ali Pali? No, no, that probably not. No, definitely. When I missed the first four events of the year as well, now it's making me regret that majorly because mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting it uh, to be in this type of position at all. And then I didn't realise, I assumed that when Ball won it, it'd just be Hor and Makuru then. I didn't realise that the spot would go down a place in the rankings. So, yeah, that definitely is making me think I should definitely should have went to Germany last year, but it is what it is. You'll know for next time. There'll be plenty more events over in Hildesheim, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, a pleasure chatting, Robin. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, best of luck for the weekend coming up in, uh, in Milton Keynes. Thanks very much, Josh.